Do you have a good imagination? Would you like to have a better imagination? Did you have a better imagination when you were a child than you do now, or do you have a better imagination now than you did when you were a child? Are there any things we can do to improve our imagination? Or is a lack of imagination a character flaw? And if we can improve our imagination, how about creativity? Or vice versa, if we can improve our creativity, surely we might be able to improve our imagination. Hi, my name is John Rose. And welcome to my YouTube channel if this is the very first video you've ever seen. If you've seen one of my videos before, welcome back. Yeehaw, you know you're here to either have a treat for yourself or to learn how to give other people treats. Because that's what my channel is all about. To help you understand how important your role plays in determining the quality of your lives. And that's the treat. And of course we don't have it because we're being tricked. So it's, a, it's, it's, tri it's treat or trick, not trick or treat. Treat our trick. Imagination. Conceptualization. Creativity. Can we improve on those? Or are they really just flaws in our character and there's not a darn thing we can do? Well, if you've watched enough of my videos, and some of you guys have watched every one of them, so you already know where I'm going with this, because I have a section on my YouTube channel about this amazing personality test called Personalysis. I've done quite a few videos on it. Well worth the time to understand this because Socrates knew we need to know ourselves, but it should have been we need to know ourselves because we have three main type of personalities. But just as equally important is we need to know other people. So even if you're not the type of person who has imagination, you're not interested in it, it behooves you to understand it because those people are in your lives and the better we understand these people, the better our lives will be. Because a lot of conflict comes because we, we think other people aren't obeying our rules. The big problem is most times we don't know their rules. Now, when you look at imagination and this personality test, Imagination has, happens to be one of the 12 secondary personality traits that stem, things flying around me, from four main personality traits where we act, talk, think, and analyze. Four main choices in three different situations. Doing what we like to do at work, doing what we feel we need to do at home, there on the bottom, and then in the middle, we think and feel what we should do three main situations where we can choose each time a different personality combination. And what we normally do with these four main personality traits, reds act, they do things quickly, yellows talk, they do things friendly, blues think, they do things creatively, and greens analyze, they do things carefully. When we look at those, we see that usually two main traits will dominate and a third will follow, where the third one either strengthens or weakens the trait. So it usually takes three of those four traits to to kind of define how we perceive the world, how we're gonna make choices, are we gonna act, talk, think, or analyze? And, and when we have two that dominate, we have six altogether traits that stem from three pairs of polar opposites. And again, the third trait usually determines whether it strengthens what we have or it weakens it, and we can learn a lot about a person by what they don't think is important in life. A whole lot <laughs> you can learn by that. Anyway, this is an amazing test that behooves all of us to learn more about it. Please check out my other videos on this subject matter. And for those who are really interested in imagination and creativity and the ability to conceptualize, we have to realize how that ties into to, to some of us just perceive the world differently than others. So when we have these four main personality traits that combine into six total traits, we have red jellos, acting and talking, those are extroverts, Thinkers and analyzers, the blues and the greens are introverts. Now Carl Jung came up with this a long time ago, and Myers Briggs took Jung's work and said, look, Carl, you're only showing two pol or one polar opposite, you didn't get these polar opposites, so you'll see that reflected in their test. James Nolan, who came up with personalysis, says you're either divergent or convergent. Are you going through a convex le lens or a concave lens? Are you, is your beam of light energy going through like the inside of the globe going out so that it diverges elsewhere, all over the place and you got all sorts of ideas, imagination? Or are you going the other way, beam of light going into a, a ball and all the energy is nearly focused? 
Convergent, divergent. So who has the imagination? It's the divergent personalities. The ones with all that blue. Because when you have these six traits, there are 12 secondary traits, depending upon whether or not you have that trait as your highest color in each of those three graphs. So for me, I'm a triple blue. Blue, blue, blue. Thinking, 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 thinking. That's why I got a great imagination. That's why I have the ability to conceptualize. That's why I care so much. I have empathy. When you have blue in those bottom two graphs, you have empathy. Blue in the bottom and on top, imagination. Blue in these two, conceptualization. And this is the ability to be able to come up with things that don't even exist. And I've done that. It's my tool that I offer to you guys, my special teaching tool. I created a tool that didn't exist. I worked real hard at trying to explain everything. That was the, my ultimate conclusion. <laughs> I grabbed knowledge from every place and put them into puzzles, tried to figure out how to interconnect them. That's what I've done. And how was I able to do it? Two main reasons, willingness and enableness. I had the ability, I had this gift to see the interconnectedness in things, but I have the desire, I have the empathy, I have the personality, the empathy in those bottom two graphs to care, to feel other people's pain. I feel your pain. Other people don't feel it. Now you can intellectualize about empathy, but it's a whole different ball game when you're, you perceive energy in your life and everything you feel and think and feel is around thinking and understanding. So, can you increase your imagination? Can you increase your creativity? Are you able to conceptualize? Well, there's two pieces to the puzzle. Our performance equals willingness times ableness. Willingness comes into the personality factors. Now, I incorporated this personality test in my special teaching tool, where I've identified 21 main problems of knowledge. Two forms of ignorance, 12 source of false knowledge, seven wellness factors, the last three tie into this personality test. Thank you, James Nolan. I guarantee you there's no one on this planet that put your test into a schematic like that as understanding the problems of knowledge. <laughs> uh, James Nolan did a great job. He took what Carl Jung did and, and Myers-Briggs, the mother-daughter team, and made them look like they're children, playing not knowing what to do. <laughs> because the problem with Myers-Briggs is they never realized Carl Jung wasn't perfect. Thank you, Carl, for coming up with the idea. He conceptualized that. You know, he was a high blue guy to come up with his ideas. But they weren't perfect. James Nolan knocked it out. He changed the four main things, traits that Carl Jung used, Myers-Briggs didn't change it. So garbage in, garbage out, so their analysis isn't really that good. James Nolan, smart man, mathematician, he really hit this out of the park for many reasons. Because Carl Jung came up with the extrovert and the introvert, and then according to James Nolan, what Myers-Briggs did was the divergent and the convergent, but there's another pair of polar opposites that Myers-Briggs lost, or missed, rather, and that is the red-blue and the yellow-green. And that is where we have individual, individualist and conformist. So that puts Nolan on a whole other level. And when you understand mathematics, apparently Myers-Briggs didn't because they should have realized, well, there's another, polar, there's another pair of polar opposites. When you got four colors and the two combined, you got three pairs of polar opposites. You don't have two. Not a mathematician if you came up and you thought that was the answer. No one mathematician. Oh, I love mathematicians because that's the gift I was given. So I can relate to what he says very easily. It's the way, same way I think. And then on top of that, realizing that, yes, you have another pair of polar opposites, the individualist and the conformist. Then you got 12 secondary traits. None of the other people had that. And again, it depends on whether you have the similar trait and all. So you could be a triple red, triple yellow, triple blue, triple blue green. And what's interesting, if you're only a double, you only got one secondary trait. But if you got all three, you have three secondary traits. Really defines your personality. What are triple blues? Philosophers, that's what I do all, every day of my life. This is all I do is think and think and think and think and think and think. As soon as I found the most valuable knowledge in the world 28 years ago, I knew where my destiny lied. I'll never forget when I first started buying books and I got this 
book on quotations. Most exciting book I ever read. I was laughing almost every quote I read. I understood everything that this huge book on quotations was saying because my mind, I'm given a gift mathematically. In eighth grade, before I entered high school and into math, before I made it to level one, I was at level four. I'm given this gift. So it allows me to connect dots in a way most people don't. It, 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 it means I've got the perfect personality to be doing exactly what I'm doing because I love it. Remember, performance is willingness times ableness. Do you love doing what you're doing? I'm a triple blue. I love this. I love being a philosopher. I love spending my whole day thinking, how can I make the world better? How can I motivate you guys to do the same thing? Can you increase your imagination? You're a little bit limited by that willingness factor, but your ableness factor is a whole different game, right? You can put some knowledge in there, and that's the key to creativity. You don't have to be a super high blue person to be creative, although it helps, especially when you can conceptualize and see things that other people can't. You can connect dots that no one else has connected before. But with creativity, it's pretty basic. All you gotta do is keep adding input. The trick here is, of all those personality traits that want to keep adding input, it's the blues that want that. Because power to a blue person is knowledge. To a red person, it's money. To a yellow person, it's who they know. Hey, I know the president. To the green, they want autonomy. Funny, the greens. <laughs> they want to be secretive. They don't want, you don't know anything about them. I've given this test to several hundred people. And it's so funny when a green takes the test and they don't want you to know about them, so they answer just the opposite questions. As soon as they, you grade the test, you go, <laughs> you don't want me to know all about you, do you? And then if they're honest and they have green in two of the graphs, that means they're predictable. When I tell them that, you can just see the frown come on their face going, oh my God, I'm predictable. The last thing I want to be is predictable. But you are, guys. <laughs> And keep in mind, there is no good and bad traits. If we didn't have a variety of traits, this would be a boring world and we couldn't get everybody to do what needs to be done. So, but if you want to create, if you want to increase your creativity, it's all about putting a bunch of knowledge in there. And it also comes with the indoctrination. You got to get rid of all that other stuff that's keeping you from connecting the dots. And that's been my philosophy as far as creativity goes for ever since I got into this. I've been trying to put as much information as I can all the time about as many different subjects and, and points that I think is important, whether it's, whether it's biology or chemistry or physics, whatever. I study a lot of different subjects to be able to get a good big picture concept so it can all make sense to me. And again, that's why I created a tool to try to put all this together. And for some reason, it seems to intimidate people, but it shouldn't because there are six boxes and every box logically connects to all the other boxes. So if you want to understand what's going on on this crazy planet, I've identified 281 pieces to this. And that's only out of the millions of pieces that are really in this six box system that I created, the ultimate schematic. It's all designed to help us get out of where we are, the hell we're in, and back up there where we need to be where we can be the true guardians on this planet. And there is where our imagination is really gonna flourish. Only in that type of environment will, will we really see our potential and what we can do from the creative aspect of our lives. Right now, that part of our society is stifled because of the damage that we've done to our society. So if you don't have a lot of imagination it's important for you to understand that if you have people in your life that do have a lot of imagination and you might be up here with a whole lot of red, there can be some basic conflict when that occurs. In fact, Nolan said he saw this more than anything when he gave this test to everybody, but opposites attract. Red's the physical energy, blue's the mental energy. They attract each other in the beginning. Hey, I got some ideas. Hey, I'll finish it for you. Hey, a good idea. Those, that combination can really work well if you understand each other's rules and not take things personally. The reds look at the blues and say, you lazy piece of crap. <laughs> and the blues are saying, hey, you might work hard, but I work smart. When it looks like I'm doing nothing, I'm working the most. <laughs> and then, of course, the blues look at the reds and say, you thoughtless piece of shit. 
<laughs> Do you ever think of anybody but yourself? I remember when I first studied this test and found out about it, my good friend Bob Wood, who turned me on to it. I remember saying to him, Bob, it looks like those red people are a little selfish. <laughs> they used the word pronoun I. And he goes, no, we're all selfish. We all do things to make us feel better. Even the blues who want to be given are doing it because it makes them feel good. <laughs> we're all selfish. But the problem is we don't know each other's rules. Remember the six blind men from India? If you haven't watched my other videos on person analysis, this helped, this is a little analogy that helps you understand it. Imagine six blind men from India and they find this elephant and they all go up to the elephant and they feel it and tell what they say or what they felt. And what of course you're gonna have is one goes up to the side of the elephant and says, it's a wall. The other grabs the ear and it says, it's a fan. Got one grabbing the leg and it says, no, it's a tree. Got the trunk, that's a snake. Got the tail, that's a rope. Got the tusk, oh my gosh, it's a spear. So just like this, the six blind men from India, our four main personality traits where we act, talk, think, and analyze, and combine into six main personality traits, three pairs of polar opposites, are just like the six blind men from India. The key here though, is that we only get three stabs at that elephant. Damn it, every time I hit that elephant, I keep getting the wall. All I got is a wall, a wall, and a wall. Hey, got a wall, got a wall again. I'm gonna look for something else. I found an ear. <laughs> Someone else is going, hey, what's this rope over here? Damn, this thing over here looks like it, it, it's a trunk. What's the trunk? It's a snake. <laughs> Forgot to say that earlier. And then I find the tree. So at the most, you might understand three of the uh, out of the six personality traits. But it's very hard for the average person to understand how the other person is coming from or where they're coming from how they think, what's important to them. What's important to you is not necessarily important to someone else. Take the yellow people, for example, they're real friendly. Nolan says they don't have a rear view mirror. They're always late to every place. Why? Because they're like a sailboat. When they go from point A to point B, they don't know how to go straight from point A, point A, to, point a, to, point a to point B. Like the reds, they're in a hurry, ready to fire aim, they gotta get there real quick, straight line. The yellows, no, no, no. What's important to the high yellow personality trait is being friendly. It isn't the, the destination that matters, it's the journey on the way. So I'm gonna go over here, hey, hey Dorothy, how you doing? Oh, look at over here, I got Gloria. I'm gonna come back over here, hey Harry, how you doing? That's what's important to the yellows. So if you have somebody in your life that's always late, chances are they're a really likable guy, aren't they? <laughs> they just have their own, a different set of priorities. And then, of course, you can be a high yellow person also and then be brought up with better virtues, one might say, and respect other people's time. And if someone's actually waiting for you, then that's not a, I don't care who you see on the way, you better get there and respect that person's time. But obviously, not everything's that urgent. It's not like I got to be there. Doesn't matter if I get there at 12 or 1. And if I'm a high yellow, <laughs> might be a little bit later. So it behooves us to understand how to increase our imagination, how to increase our creativity, and if we don't have those traits, how to understand those people in our lives. Because so much conflict comes when other people don't obey our rules. Now blues, they can't stand being told what to do. Reds, they're the boss. In a kingdom, the red is the king. The yellow, politician the blue, the philosopher, the green, the lawyers, engineers, accountants. Making sense to you? How about an, an engine, a car? The red would be the engine, the motor. The yellow would be the lubricants, make sure everything goes smoothly. The blue is the steering wheel. Let's guide this place, this car the right direction. And what would be the green? <laughs> the brakes. <laughs> slow things down. When things get stressful, slow things down. Get my negatives, I'm gonna get stubborn. Yellows, what happens to, are the blues if they get in their negatives? Poor me. You want this space? Adios, you can have it, I'm out of here. Yellows, they're gonna yell at you, you don't get me mad. Reds, whoo, they'll hit you. Throw something at you if they're a woman. Only makes sense. Not being as strong as men, it's not gonna hurt your hand to throw something at somebody. But you see them hitting too. 
So why are women hitting men? Why are men hitting women? They're in their negatives. They got to do something physical. So be careful about getting those guys angry, especially those greens. You don't want to get them angry either. They're in their negatives. They play a mean game called Nikki Saab. Now I got you, you son of a bitch. They'll set you up. If you got a, a green boss as a manager, you need to tell your company you're working for, get them out of there. That's the worst type of manager to have. And what they're going to do is they'll set you up if they don't like you. They'll just wait till you finally break one of their rules, which is what the greens love. <laughs> Got to have rules, security, and then they'll get you. They're the ones who want revenge. Never could understand why people would be so hurt that they would want to revenge on somebody and damage their property or whatever. But you can kind of understand it better when you see the personalities. But then there's a lot more to personalities, isn't there? There are values. Some people, I think, were raised by wolves. <laughs> Don't you think so, too? Seriously. You look around it and you see how some kids behave and you look at the parents and you think, why don't we do something to teach these young kids how to be parents? They're obviously not doing anything to make these children grow up with any type of uh, structure in their lives at all. So this is a sick world. Everybody's got a great excuse for doing all the dumb things they do. Remember, we got a serpent in our belly. Lacking the sunlight energy that helps us feel one with everyone. And then we're being programmed to believe in absurdities so we'll commit atrocities. What we need now are are those high blue people who have a great imagination to come up with some creative ideas to help get this message out there. And I have a strong feeling that a high percentage of my subscribers are gonna be real high blue because I think like you. And I know I'm appeal to reds and yellows and greens and all others too for just the, the topic alone. But I really believe my strongest audience are going to be the people who are more like my personality. But that doesn't mean you have to. It's interesting how Nolan talked about how opposites attract. And he said 80% of marriages, people marry their opposites, their first marriage. And when they divorce and they have a second marriage, 80% of people marry people that have similar personalities meaning that they perceive the world the same way the other person does. So you, we all know life is all about changing and adapting and going through life. But if you're, one person's grabbing the elephant's leg and the other one's grabs the tail, you might struggle on staying on the same path. But if you're both hanging on to the tail, <laughs> might make that journey a little bit easier. Something to think about. I guarantee it is. I, I met Bob Wood coming up to about 28 years ago. Most influential person in my life because he turned me on to raw food in this personality test. He was an engineer for Dresser Industries and for the last 10 years of, it, of his career, he taught this test to other engineers all around the world. So he knew it backwards and forwards. He was my best friend for, for quite a while until he moved. and. We spent a lot of time every day. He couldn't carry on a conversation without incorporating that test somehow. And I loved it because it's right up my alley. Makes sense to me. I want to be able to understand people. To me, that's, that's a blue word, understanding. The more you learn about this test, you see that certain personalities are going to use certain words and adjectives and questions. I did a video on <laughs> knowing what kind of question people ask. You can figure out the personality. So I hope you guys see some benefit of this. I hope this helps with your imagination. And if you don't have the personality that has imagination, it doesn't mean you can't Im improve on your creativity. And again, how does that work? You just keep putting input in, put in more good stuff, take out more bad stuff, and then you let it incubate. That's how creativity works. 
You just keep putting information in and many times all you have to do is simply ask yourself a question. Plant that question in your brain and it's going to keep working on it and you're going to and that answer is going to come to you out of nowhere. It happens to me all the time. I'll be in the middle of a thought process and I'm already juggling three or four ideas in my mind at the same time even while I'm talking and all of a sudden the answer will come in and I'll go, oh my God, I really should stop right now and record this so I don't forget it. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons why I occasionally digress actually. Anyway, uh, I'm digressing again, aren't I? So, uh, once again, I hope you guys embrace this knowledge. If you have a high blue personality, you're going to love it more so than others. If you're a real high red, there's a chance you don't even, you, you probably already tuned out. This isn't really something up your alley that much, unless you happen to be uh, an intellectual. Reds don't mean you're stupid just because you're not thinking. It's just that when you look at the performance equation, performance equals willingness times ableness, you could have a 5,000 IQ, but you're all red, no blue, you don't put it to work. <laughs> you could have a 100 IQ, but you're all blue and you're working the hell out of it. Every time you turn around, you come up with a stupid idea, but you finally figure it out it's a stupid idea, you come up with another stupid idea, and finally you get a great idea. <laughs> or who knows, they're all great ideas. What does it depend on? It depends on putting the good stuff in, taking the bad stuff out, and when we can do that, ow, we're in for a treat. <laughs>